this is Lynn Langett for All Things Data and in today's screencast I'm going to take a look at my SlideShare analytics data as viewed through the lens of Power BI in Excel 2013. So to get started, a little bit about me. I'm a former Microsoft employee. I'm now an independent contractor and I'm an MVP for SQL Server for Microsoft. I'm also a GDE for the cloud platform for Google and a 10 gen uh, MongoDB master, spend most of my time doing big data architectures and uh, training around data. So let's look at today's scenario. If you haven't had a chance to look at Power BI in Excel 2013, I'm doing a series of screencasts basically playing around with data because it's fun and to help you get an idea of what's possible. So I'm going to use Power Query, which is a tool that is in beta as of this recording to query and clean the data. Then I'm going to use um, some of the other tools. In this one, I didn't end up using Power Pivot, but I often use Power Pivot to bring tables together. I'm going to use good old pivot tables and pivot charts because I found that they were an integral part of getting meaning out of this data. And I did take a look at Power View and Power Map, but I found that pivot tables and pivot charts did the job. So that's what we're going to focus on here. So for this scenario, I was having the good luck of having one of my SlideShare decks featured on the front page of, of the SlideShare website. So I wanted to take a deeper look at the impact of that deck being featured on my analytics. I could understand how, if at all, that impacted the views of all my slide decks and just really understand a bit more because although I had looked at the SlideShare data page, I wanted to um, do some more analysis. So um, that was the scenario. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut to the demo and we'll start on that. So as I said, my curiosity was piqued by the fact that I had the good luck that one of my recent uploads to SlideShare was featured on their homepage and I had exponentially more traffic. So I do look occasionally at my SlideShare analytics and they do have some good analytics here. So I'll just show you what that looks like if you use SlideShare. It shows you over a period of time here um, what information is occurring about the decks that you've uploaded. And not only do they show you uh, views, they show you actions and social actions, which was of particular interest in this scenario. So you can see here's the deck that got featured on Hadoop. And then I have, um, you know, countries. And thanks, particularly if you're from India listening to this, to all my Indian uh, viewers, I really appreciate your interest. And you can see my traffic sources and slideshare actions and social actions. And this is over a one month period. I can also look at my views, my actions, which all interesting stuff, but I thought, hmm, I see I can export this data as a CSV. So the first thing that I did was I exported the data and notice that I can put a date range in here if I want to, but I just pulled it all because I don't have a huge amount of data. So once I did that, I went ahead and looked at that CSV and it was as was expected, a really kind of simple and boring CSV. Um, so I thought, all right, I'm going to use Power BI and work with this. So the next thing that I did, and I've you know done some of this in advance so it doesn't become too long of a demo, is in Excel, I use Power Query and I imported uh, this CSV. So Power Query, if you don't have it, it's because you haven't downloaded the beta bits. There's two different versions of it around there floating, floating out there. Um, the most current version is going to have this shared and sign out option because this is going to be integratable into Office 365 Power BI. So if you have a version of Power Query that doesn't have this, you want to go and get the latest version if you want to work with Office 365. Not required, but, but it, it, it's interesting. So anyway, I went ahead and I imported this and I worked with it in Power Query and I did some filtering and shaping. And what I did is I eliminated some of the um, redundant decks and I uh, filtered out some information and I also found that I wanted to add some categories and how I did that is I just duplicated the uh, titles and then I pulled out some text and I had to do some manual shaping in here too. So I have two sets of categories. So once I did that then I brought the data into a basic pivot table and you can see here 
that I have some sort of interesting data. I can see how many views. So over the lifetime, I've had over a um, um, quarter million views, which is pretty amazing. So again, thanks to all the folks out there that have been uh, working on that. And this is just a simple pivot table. All I did is I just pulled this in and I set it by category. Now, this was interesting because I could see the count of the views and I was not surprised to see that database had the highest count. And then I could drill down further and I could see within the various um, categories what were the counts. For example, that Azure was exponentially more than AWS or Google would make sense since I used to work at Microsoft. But still, I wasn't seeing anything that was a surprise, really. Um, and that's what I really was looking for. So I kept playing around with this data. I kept um, you know, turning some things on in the pivot table. And I looked at the data in different ways. So in other words, rather than the sum of the views, I just did some really basic stuff. You know, I could do the count, the average. Also inside of here, of course, you can go show values by percent of grand total, which was really interesting um, as, I, as I went along. So again, just interactively exploring the data, I was looking for an insight that was um, a surprise. And I found one. So I made another pivot table and um, I did percent to total for my main categories. And I did this on the views, the downloads, and the tweets. And my expectation is that these things would be roughly equal. And I didn't, it, this didn't jump out to me until I made a pivot uh, chart um, or a, a regular chart, basically. So one of the things that was kind of amusing and caused me to make this screencast is of my major categories in my slide shares, I have uh, four categories, volunteering, developer oriented decks, you know, around programming, cloud around uh, Azure, AWS and Google primarily, and then database, which I included um, both the NoSQL and the SQL server, which might have been a little bit of a stretch. But what I thought was really interesting and I wanted to share with my audience was in exploring the data and visualizing the data, I found that I was roughly a third, a third, a third, a little bit less the volunteering, a little bit more on the database, which would make sense um, in terms of the views. The downloads were very different though. Uh, developers want to take a look at things, don't want to bother to download it. Database people, roughly about the same percentage download it. In the cloud, they download it more, which is sort of interesting. Uh, would lead me to assume that people are using my decks to um, make their own presentations, which is cool. But the one sort of fun insight that I got out of this is database people love to tweet. <laughs> so you can see here that it's exponentially more around my database decks on Twitter, which was something I had kind of an insight into just based on Twitter activity, but um, really, really interesting. And this is going to cause me, of course, when I do database related content, whether on SlideShare or other channels like YouTube, to make sure and um, you know, associate it with uh, Twitter. So just kind of an interesting insight and really easy. This took me like a half an hour and not something that I was aware of through the SlideShare analytics, just using Power Query. And in this case, pivot tables. Um, I did take a look at Power View, but the visualization was actually stronger, I thought, in this chart. So a fun little exercise for the evening, grab some of your data and work with um, Excel um, Power BI. Now just to summarize the methods that I used to analyze my SlideShare data is I went to the SlideShare site, the analytics page export, and I uh, set the filter, which was basically no filter. I pulled all my data and it's only allowing a date filter. Then I imported the CSV into Power Query and inside of Power Query, I did further filtering. And the big thing that I did is I derived um, two levels of categories by copying the presentation titles and then doing a little bit of manual massaging to create um, categories because I just had too many different presentations to group together. So I did the shaping and filtering, filtering in Power Query and then I created the categories within Power Query and in Excel. And then I did several different visualizations using pivot tables and charts to see if there was any interesting insights. And I did get one that, um, and it was of course that the database people tend to uh, tweet more. 
So as I'm wrapping this up, I uh, just want to remind everybody that this is the last week of a contest that Microsoft is running to award the top five uh, technical nonprofits um, a uh, portion of $100,000 and Teaching Kids Programming is still on the leaderboard. So it's a few more days. If you haven't voted yet, now is time. And how you vote for this is you go to azuredevs.com and you vote for us and then confirm your vote. We'd really like to um, partake in this um, donation that Microsoft's making. So if you haven't already as well, check out our courseware, Teach Your Own Kids to Program. If it's, you want C Sharp, it's on Pluralsight. Java or Small Basic is on our teachingkidsprogramming.org website. So to wrap this up, I'm Lynn Langett for All Things Data. Keep learning and have a great day.